Karibu tena mtazamaji tuendelee na taarifa zaidi. Seneta wa Baringo Gideon Moi amezindua mradi wa ujenzi wa kituo cha shule ya upili cha Moi hapa jijini Nairobi. Shule hiyo mpya itaanza kuwasajili wanafunzi wa kidato cha kwanza na cha pili kuanzia mwezi Januari mwaka ujao. Vile vile amempongeza Rais Mstafu Daniel Moi kwa sifa zake za ujenzi wa shule jambo ambalo ni muhimu katika kuimarisha na kuboresha sekta ya elimu nchini. Moi ametoa wito kwa viongozi katika sekta mbalimbali kujitolea kikamilifu ili kuhudumia wa Kenya wote inavyostahili. The work of a teacher is very special. We all know where it begins. When he or she teaches in class, when he or she mentors a student, when he or she builds a school. But we will never know when this work comes to an end. For the good work of a teacher never ends. It expands like the ripples caused by a stone fallen on a lake. The ripples go outward in circles until they reach a shore. The impact of a good teacher is like these ripples in the sea of humanity and history. These ripples are eternal and everlasting. And I really want to thank the teachers of Moi Educational Center, of making Moi Educational Center what it is today. And it's, made, it's because of you, you, you have encouraged us to go now the extra mile to build the secondary school. I want to say thank you, thank you. Wafanyi biashara katika soko la Gikomba hapa Nairobi wanalalamikia hatua ya raia kutoka Uchina kujihusisha moja kwa moja kwenye biashara ya reja reja na sasa wanauza nguo kutoka Uchina ambazo ni za bei ya chini mno. Hatua hiyo mtazamaji wanaitaja kuathiri pakubwa biashara zao kwani mwananchi wa kawaida anataka bidhaa za bei ya chini japo ubora wa nguo hizo ni wa kutiliwa shaka. Awali mwanahabari mwenzangu Nicholas Sombua aliandaa taarifa ifuatayo ambapo wafanyi biashara wanapendekeza wa China wauze tu katika kiwango cha juu wala sio kushindana nao katika kiwango cha chini. Tano kwamba wafanyi biashara wapo wengi wanafanya biashara lipo lori pale ambalo ukiliangalia limebeba nguo kwa kiasi kikubwa sana lofti na wanasema kwamba hizo ni bills naomba kidogo tuondoke kidogo wanabeba nguo wakinunua kutoka maeneo haya yapo malori vile vile ambayo nasafirisha hizo nguo na kuzileta kwenye soko hili na lofti baada ya zile taarifa kuweza kutokea ndipo basi tuko hapa kuweza kumpasha mkenya ni kipi ambacho kinaenea maeneo haya Manake mtazamaji zimekuepo taarifa kwamba wachina wameza kuingia katika masoko haya na kufanya biashara ya chini ambayo mwananchi wa kawaida katika Nairobi anafanya na hivyo basi wengi wakaonekana kukero na hilo wengine wanasema kwamba mchina ameleta biashara ya kiwango kizuri mapato mazuri anatoa ajira kwa wengi na vile vile basi kuweza kutupilia mbali yale madai lofti ni meza kutembea katika 
maeneo kadhaa maduka kadhaa hapa katika soko hili la Gikomba na duka lililopo upande huu wa kushoto linaitwa Mumbai kisha upande mwingine kule mbele lipo duka ama jumba la landmark ambapo basi nilipotembea pale nimeona kweli wapo wa China ambao wanafanya biashara japo hapa Mumbai wanasema kwamba wa China wapo lakini hizi kazi wamezipa mwananchi wa kawaida kuweza kuzifanya wao ni faida tu ambazo wanafanya wanatoa nguo zenyewe uchina wanasema kwamba uwepo basi ile bell tunasema kwamba kutoka maeneo ya UK wanasema kwamba inauzwa tuseme pengine kama ni nguo za watoto wanauza bell wanauza shilingi alfu kumi unapata kwamba ya mchina inauzwa shilingi alfu tano na hivyo basi wengi wao wanasema kwamba biashara imeweza kushuka kwa nguo zao za UK ama kutoka maeneo mengine kule awahuzi kwa sasa manake za wachina zimekuja kisha bei yake ni ya chini kabisa lofti na mtazamaji niweze kuniruhusu niweze kuzungumza na baadhi ya wafanyabiashara hapa na wananchi walioko katika maeneo haya karibu sana kwenye KT News na kushikia microphone tafadhali naomba unijuze jina lako unaitwa nani na unafanya kazi gani hapo okay, asante sana mimi naitwa Jackson Mwanzia ama jina la utani kanga ni ufanya biashara hapa Mumbai upande ya tunaongelea wa China wa China wameingilia sana kazi ya mtumba ingekuwa wanaleta kutoka nje lakini wasiuze huko kwa hao wengine wao watuuze huko kwa inta watu waende huko lakini wao wameharibu upande wa kusema wameharibu kama aje wanakuja kuuza hapa ambapo sisi wananchi wa chini tungeuza sasa wao ndio wameharibu upande hiyo kwa hivyo shida yako kubwa na mchina kija kufanya biashara kawaida hapa kuuza manguo kutoka uchina ni nini shida na wanashukisha bei wanaharibu biashara ya yeah. zako unazouza ni za kutoka wapi uh, UK Canada bail unaweza pesa ngapi kama nguo za mtoto tuseme kama nguo ya mtoto inatoka 17000 mchina akileta nauza 1012 ya kwa hivyo zao zinakuwa ni za bei ya chini ziko chini bei yao kwa hivyo pendekezo lako kama mkenya ni nini mm, wa china wa impo watulete lakini wasikuje kuuza huku ya yeah. Na lofti na mtazamaji sauti ya Mkenya hiyo hapo akitoa semi zake njoo hapa tafadhali e, naomba utuambie jina lako waitwa nani biashara ya mchina iko namna gani wewe unafanya gani ya UK uchina ama ni wapi kwa majina mimi naitwa Alex Usia na kulingana na vile biashara inaenda kwa sasa mchina anashikilia mkondo kwa saizi analeta mizigo mingi na ukiangalia sana watu wengi wana ajira kwa sababu ya mchina Shida moja ni kuwa nguo yake hizi fikie ile quality ya UK. Quality ya mchina iko chini. Lakini ukiangalia kibei mchina yako sawa. Ndio maana watu wengi wamekimbilia kazi ya mchina. Kwa sababu ya ma, bei ya bidhaa yake. Yeah. kuna baadhi yenu ambao wanasema kwamba umemmsikia mwenzi wako akisema kwamba e, mchina hapana. Wewe unasemaje mchina abaki nguo zipande bei ama namna gani? Labda tu tuseme kuwekwe vikwazo kadhaa mchina ikiwe vikwazo kadhaa kwamba yeye akuwe supplier akisha kuwa supplier yeye mambo yake ni kuleta mzigo Kenya wa Kenya wapate ajira asikuje paka kufuatilia kuuza mzigo paka hapa hiyo ananyima watu wengi ajira eh. na mtazamaji baadhi ya semi na sauti za wananchi asante sana wakizungumza kuhusiana na hili swala njoo tuongee njoo tuongee tafadhali Ah sawa acha tupate mwingine hapa mtazamaji. Unaitwa nani? Biashara unafanya mchina kuna tatizo gikomba na soko kamukunje. Kwa majina mimi ni Elijah Makori. Mimi ni msaji wa mzigo. Kitambo kitambo nilikuwa na usa UK lakini pesa ikaewa imeenda chini. So ikabidi nirudi China. Kwa sababu gani nirudi China? Kwa sababu ya bei. Bei ya China ni kidogo ukiwa na 1300 400 unaweza nunua beri kama 20 uanze kuuza kwa hiyo hautakosa lakini UK utanunua hizo beri za 1300 lakini ni beri kama eh, 7 nane. na hizo kitambo ziende itateki time so mimi kwangu mimi nategemea China imeniinua imenisaidia imeni imenirudisha mahali ya kwanza so na advance nione vile nitaweza kuleta mizigo mingi. Yeah. Na wa Kenya wenyewe manake kama ulivyosema ni kwamba wa China nguo zao ni za bei ya chini. Wa Kenya wenyewe wakati tunakuja kununua je, zile zinaenda sana ni za UK ama ni za kutoka uchina? Unajua mwa Kenya wa kawaida anategemea bei. Mchaina bei yake ni kidogo. Watu wageshagi wananua anakuja ananua nguo na 
UK iko 10000 sasa hata ukiangalia lazima anunue China imuinue ndio tena aende kurudi UK lakini nguo ya UK iko quality yeah Mm. Asante sana mtazamaji huyu hapo amesema kwamba alikuwa akiuza nguo za UK lakini kwa sasa anauza nguo za Uchina njoo tafadhali tuongee njoo tuongee usiogope njoo Wewe mwenyewe unafanya biashara hapa unauza unanunua pengine Uchina ama UK Eh mimi nanunua chote ninachopatana nacho iwe ni China ama UK Sometimes tunaangalia nini inaenda unajua tunaangalia mfuko pia na maslahi kulingana na kazi venye ilivyo Ndio yes na unaweza jua nguo ya Uchina na kutoka UK tunaangaliaga si kama si wenye tumezoea mtumba unaangalia label ndani kuna hiki kitu ngekoaga iko ndani unaangalia ni UK ama made in China so you buy according to what you've seen jina nani mimi naitwa Titus Kilonzo asante kwa hivyo mtazamaji hizo ndizo semi za baadhi ya wafanyabiashara hapa maeneo haya ya Gikomba na basi kuna sababu ambayo pengine hatujaweza kuzungumza ama kuweza kuelekea waliko wa China na kamera zetu kwa ni kwa sababu za kiusalama na hata hivyo nilikuepo ndani ya jengo hili lakini hata hivyo uwezo kaingia na kamera kwa sababu wale watu pale ni wafanyabiashara wanaofanya kazi za Uchina na kutoka UK wote wanafanya kazi pamoja. Kwa hivyo kuna mmoja anataka kuzungumza vibaya kuhusu mwingine ama biashara mwingine. Manake wote wako hapa kutafuta. Na hivyo basi na kwa vigumu sana kuweza kuelekea waliko na kamera zetu. Lakini hata hivyo tutajaribu kuzungumza, tutajaribu kuwatafuta kuelekea kule na kuomba kuzungumza nao je waweze kutoa upande wao wa taarifa kusema manake tetesi ni kwamba nguo za kutoka Uchina ni za kiwango cha chini bei yake pia ni ya chini na kama alivyosema hapa fanya biashara ni kuwa pia mkenya wa kawaida mara nyingi anataka kitu ambacho ni cha pesa za chini ama za kiwango cha chini hapendi lakini ukijaribu kuangalia hali ya mfuko lofti ni kuwa wa Kenya wengi wanataka bidhaa ambazo ni za bei rahisi. Hivyo basi ndipo wanakuja kwa hawa wa China ambao wanafanya biashara maeneo haya kama Kunji na hata Gikomba. Kwa Kolofti pengine kama una swali unaweza uliza. Na mtazamaji ni taarifa yake ni kuambua ambaye aliweza kuitengeneza mapema asubuhi kwenye taarifa zetu za leo mashinani akiwa na lofti matambo hivyo kukuletea tena ama marejeo yake saa hizi mwendo wa alasiri kwenye taarifa za mbiu ya KTN tukiendelea mbele na taarifa zaidi ni kwamba shirika la ndege huko nchini Kenya Airways limesema kuwa pendekezo la ushirikiano kati yake na halmashauri ya usimamizi wa shughuli za viwanja vya ndege nchini KAA kuhusiana na kusimamia uwanja wa kimataifa wa Jomo Kinyata linategemea uamuzi wa bunge akizungumza wakati wa mkutano wa kila mwaka mwenyekiti wa KQ Michael Joseph amethibitisha kuwa wamemuidhinisha maumeidhinisha kujiuzulu kwa afisa mkuu mtendaji wa kampuni hiyo Sebastian Mikos Mikos alikuwa ametangaza hapo awali atajiuzulu miezi mitano kabla ya kukamilika kwa muda wa kandarasi yake kutokana na sababu zake za kibinafsi So in general terms the 218 uh, 18 was a, what I would what, what I would qualify as a good year. Uh, we have few reasons to uh, define it as a good year. Uh, the, f the first one is that we managed to grow our revenues by 8% um, due to um, quite increased activity of the, of the company. And as you know, we have three main sources of revenues, which is, of course, passenger tickets, ancillary revenues, so all the services we are selling uh, on top of, uh, of the tickets, and cargo uh, revenues, which, which uh, started to be a very significant part of uh, our business. We achieved these better revenues mainly through um, flying more and selling more on the same uh, fleet into in 2018 compared to uh, 17. So that was due to um, uh, two factors. First of all, we, we we just have put the aircraft more in more in the air, but also we've created a different connectivity uh, system, which is called the, the bank structure. So we shifted from five to three bank structure, in, improving our possibility of connecting passengers by 30 percent. Um, that resulted in almost almost 1,000 passengers a day carried more. So of course it reflects uh, immediately. Um, the, it, it, it was reflected in uh, in the revenue. In a turnaround process, and I can assure you that one of the reasons why we where we went through the process with with KAA was we looked five years into the future and said, how are we going to turn around this airline for the benefit not just of 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 the of the shareholders but the 4,600 staff, did you say? 4,600 staff, everybody we employ, we need to turn around this business. And that's why we started to work towards having a partnership with KAA. 
you saw what happened. Uh, the, it became very political. Um, we had to change tack, and we are changing tack. So what, the direction we're going, which I cannot tell you exactly the details now, is we are positioning ourselves to be, to be able to compete more effectively with our competitors. Right now, we are not on a level playing field. We have many challenges in trying to compete with the people that are our biggest competitors. So we are trying to turn around, we're trying to, to, to position ourselves with a level playing field so we can position the airline. We think, and I have to answer you, shareholders, that this is not just a, a for-profit company. This is also a strategic asset of the country of Kenya. We believe this should be, the government should see it as a strategic asset that we that it, it improves the GDP of Kenya, not just makes money. And this is where we position, position the, air, the airline. I want to tell you that I'm not a miracle person. This will not happen overnight. We have, we have changed things. We are improving. Losses have decreased. We are hoping that by, during this year that we will improve the cash situation with the airline so that we, we be in position to grow the airline. We cannot promise you that if you come back here next year and we are the same size with the same root structure that we'll be giving you another financial picture. We need to grow. We need to grow the number of airline, aircraft we have and we need to grow the number of places where we fly. We will not do this, you know, just widely. We will do this very carefully so that we, we, so that we, we move, improve the airline step by step. Na mtazamaji mkutano huo ulikuwa mapema hii leo pamoja na maafisa wengine wakuu katika shirika hilo la ndege hapa nchini. Kwingineko shughuli za kawaida ziliweza kutatizika kwenye mashamba makuu mawili mjini Naivasha kule kaunti ya Nakuru wakati zilipositishwa kwa siku ya tatu hii leo baada ya zaidi ya wafanyikazi mbili kugomea kazi wafanyikazi hao wanadai kukabiliwa na mazingira mabaya ya kazi na malipo duni wasimamizi wa shamba la Golden na lile la Delmea Pivot yanaomilikiwa na kampuni ya Vegpro wanaendelea kukadiria hasara mamilioni ya pesa kufuatia mgomo huo mapema hii leo wafanyibiashara na wafanyikazi walikimbizana na maafisa wa polisi kabla ya kuelekea katika afisi za leba mjini Naivasha ili kutaka kusikizwa haya najiri wakati ikibainika wazi kuwa wafanyikazi wanalipwa mishahara duni ili kuinua hali na maisha ya wafanyikazi wa Delamea na Coach Farm tajiri kufika mwezi wa nane last year tena aka withdraw akakataa kunegotiate huo mkataba kesi ikaenda kotini tarehe 14 mwaka jana wakatoa judgment ambayo ili dismiss ile kesi ya kukataa kukata watu pesa na ile kesi ya kukataa kuongea mambo ya mkataba watu wa maua mshahara yao iko elefsa, minimum ya elfu saba na nane watu wa mboga mshahara yao ni elfu nne na tano ndio tunasema kama huyu tajiri ni mmoja kwa nini ana discriminate Watu wa mboga nyumba wanapewa shilingi elfu moja mia tatu. Watu wa maua wanapewa elfu mbili mia tano. Na watu wote wanaishi location moja kwa masingira the same. Kwa nini wana discriminate hawa watu? Ndiyo tukasema hii mambo yote tulete kwa mkataba, tuweke CBA, tuimbrue hii maisha ifanye nini ikuje sawa sawa kama wa, watu wengine. Maneno ya kabila tunataka tutukulie mbali kabisa. Na huko Iko mama nyingine mjaluo amefanya huko Nyanza. Amepanga management kutoka juu paka chini ni mjaluo tupu. Na tutaki hiyo. Tunataka national outlook. Tunataka national outlook. Hii maneno wa jaluo ni hata mimi nimejaluo. Lakini sipendelee maneno ya kabila. Viongozi katika kaunti ya Taita Taveta wameitaka serikali kuwachukulia hatua wale ambao wanahusika na mauaji ya mtu mmoja katika mzozo huo mzozo unaoendelea katika kati ya wafugaji na wakulima zaidi ya ngamia stini kufikia sasa tunaarifiwa kwamba vile vile wameuawa Itendo ambacho kilitokea hapa ya kwamba kijana wetu aje auliwe hapa tena kwa shamba yake kwa boma yake mwenyewe tena familia yake wakiangalia kitendo hicho ni na kilani 
na ni kitendo ambacho hatuwezi kuchekea na ni kitendo ambacho hatutaki tena kamwe taita taveta kijirudie katiba tuliyoipitisha 2010 inasema ya kwamba hakuna mtu ana haki ya kutoa maisha ya mwenzake nifikiria ya kwamba kwa vile kuna kesi na OB numbers za watu ambao wameuawa tungeita ministry of interior tuwaulize ni kwa nini kuna kesi kotini na hadi leo hakuna mtu amefungwa matiangi ninayemjua sio matiangi wa kungoja kesho kutu na sijui mtakuwaje na bosi mzuri kama huyo na nyinyi mnamleti down Huyo assistant chief aende interdiction uchunguzi ukiendelewa bwana DCC. Tazamaji kufikia hapa tuna la ziada nitakuletea taarifa zaidi mwendo wa saa moja kwenye KTN leo hivyo basi usikose lakini endelea kuwa nasi kwani kifuatacho kwenye mdo sokoa mrefu kikosi kizima cha meza ya michezo akiwa na wageni wao tayari kimewasili chini ya uongozi wa Ahmed Bahaj ambaye atakuwa na mahojiano na taarifa mbalimbali kuhusiana na michezo humu nchini na hata kimataifa endelea kuwa nasi